I once met someone who told me that she was healed from her drug addiction by praying to Jesus for help. Now that's about as real and undeniable of an experience as I can imagine. She was addicted for a long time, and then praying to Jesus and becoming a follower, she gained the strength and the conviction, and her life was turned around. It would make no sense for anyone to try to dissuade her of the power of God or the power of Jesus because she experienced it firsthand in her life. Now, I thanked her for sharing her story and for sharing her testimony with me. And as we discussed it, I told her about some other people that I know around the world who have had the same healing and transforming experience from addiction through praying to Krishna or praying to Allah. And I said that just as I could not possibly refute your experience, even if I tried, it wouldn't matter to you because you know because you experienced it yourself. In the same way, I asked, would she or could she refute the experience of another person who had had an identical healing and an identical transformation, but through praying in another tradition and another religion to God by another name like Krishna or Allah. She thought about it carefully. And she said, no, of course not. She realized it would be ridiculous to try to tell someone that what they experienced, such a profound transformation, such a profound experience, as being untrue. So she went on to say, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And she said, I'm not one to judge other people's religious experiences, even as I hold on to my own. And like those blind men and the elephant, no one has to deny his or her own experience. But we're often brought closer to what's real and true by listening to others. I even know a number of people who've had their lives greatly enriched by creating what they would call pagan rituals connected to the natural world, inspired by ancient practices. I've participated in Native American Indian rituals that were powerful and transforming. And I know people around the world who pray to their ancestors and who are quite confident that their ancestors remain a tangible part of their daily lives. What I know is that it's not my place to judge or to deny anyone's religious experience. It's my job to make meaning of my own experience and to share with others as they share with me. That's why I'm starting a campaign in this church against intellectual waterboarding. Because that's an example of the blind leading the blind, and we know where that can take us. If you'd like to deepen your relationship with people who don't believe or practice in the same way that you do, then I strongly encourage you to look first at your own life. Try to remember your own authentic moments of connection with God and spirit or whatever you consider to be ultimate. Look for those moments in your life when you experience mercy, forgiveness, or grace. These are moments of revelation. They reveal to us something of deep significance about our lives. How do you understand and make meaning of these occurrences in your life? If you were to put them into words, if you were to have to explain to someone some experience you had of grace, of forgiveness, of redemption in your life, how would you do it? Do you have a testimony? If you don't, if you don't think you do, I want to encourage you to discover yours. Once we make these connections to our own story, then we feel less compelled to tear down and to criticize and argue with other people's stories. Reverend O'Quill explains that our capacity for sharing and listening grows when we discover that we have something positive and substantive to offer besides critique. And that's what happened to me. I realized that once... I started to recognize that I had had experiences in my own life, spiritual experiences and grace. I stopped feeling the need to go around cutting down everybody else's. And she makes it clear, Reverend O'Quill does, that the tendency to debate, to waterboard, and to criticize people's experiences is really a symptom of spiritual hunger, spiritual emptiness. 
It's the foolishness of the blind men and the elephant who at least could share their testimony, but they couldn't listen to anyone else's. Your job, the prophet tells us, is to wrestle with God in the wilderness of your own life and then to come out willing to share what that experience revealed to you. If it's powerful, tell us of the power of it. If it's empty, share with us how that has changed you. A religious life should not be based only in reading and reforming and critiquing other people's beliefs and other people's religious experiences. Our job is to plumb the depths of our own experience with the ultimate, to discover our personal testimony 